There's many things wrong in that, in that story. But there is one point that is still true. Justice requires a reversal of conditions for the excluded and the opposite and the opposed. And if they insist on their privileges, also for the insiders and the oppressors. This seems to be the theme in the book of Luke. It seems that what was really going on in Roman time, what really was going on in, in the social realm, it seems that Luke is going to point out they were in justice. And the very things that the Romans believed was right in social behavior, Luke is going to point out that Jesus said, these are wrong. If we feel wrong, we call for reversal. If we have done the wrong, we don't want any reversal. But if the other claims that we have wronged them and all for reversal, we reject their plea as unjustified, ungrateful, and unordinary proud. It is at this point that the Gospel of Luke both encourages us and confronts us. If social, if social needs need to be made, we need to make them. Luke's unfinished history includes a grand reversal as a sign of the reign of God and invites us to consider the reversals that we encounter in our day as possible sign of His reign. When Christ reigns, there are certain reversals that we need to make in our lives. For instance, let me give you a couple of illustrations. In the Gospel of Luke, there tends to be good news for the poor. And this is part of the great re reversal. When we encounter the book of Luke, the, probably the best known story in the book of Luke is the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. You remember the rich man grew up and he had the barns filled and he had everything? That was the rich man and, and the poor man. And he died and went to hell. The rich, the Lazarus died and went to heaven. It seemed like the reverse took place. That the rich man went to hell and the poor man went to heaven. Luke speaks of our day. Throughout the world, people are coming to the conviction that poverty, in large measure, is a result of injustice. And I was telling my wife, I said, after studying this, I had my convictions. Do you remember when that thing hit Haiti? And it wiped out so many people and wiped out their lands and wiped out their homes and they lived in huts. And my first remark was sad. Here it is. Well, they lived that way. They deserved it. And when they came on TV and they showed all those huts and all those things that happened, people living in tents and they showing all the, the kids with no clothes on. And I'm saying, they, that's, that's who they are. And that's how they are. I mean, they don't deserve any better than that because that's how they live. Whoa. The Lord said, six months later, and I'm studying this, it was injustice on the part of the leadership, not them. There are some people who are in the condition they're in, not because of their own belief, but because of the injustice that is put on them by their leaders. And we should not consider them unworthy of our support and help. While we who have never had to face hunger and nakedness and lack of medical service and who consider ourselves producers of wealth find it rather difficult to understand the interpretation of reality. We look for people who are poor throughout their... We, we look at people as if it's their own fault and then claim that we are willing to help the worthy poor, but not the rest. Therefore, 
there are only a few worthy poor and there is no need for radical action to change. Well, the poor in Luke are the supposedly unworthy poor. Quite often the poor and the sinners were lumped together. And after all, the poor could not offer proper sacrifices, could not keep themselves clean of ritual contamination, and had to deal with many things that godly people considered unclean. And when you see unclean people, when you see unclean kids, and people come around and you see them dressed in poor clothes, and there are people that, that don't look clean, and you're saying, they're not worthy to sit at my table. There's good news in the Bible, in the book of Luke. It is to these poor that the message of the good news came. It is to those poor that the great reversal is announced. Thus Luke comes into our present reality speaking a word that, though unwelcomed by many, our age needs to heed to help those who are unworthy, who we think are unworthy. Let me give you a quick another one. Women. You know, in some places in the world, it's not good to be a woman. I would say in most of the world, in the third world countries, to be a woman is pretty sad. Throughout history, in the world, in our age, it's characterized, now women are wanting to be top dog. Finally, women have got the message. I can be a boss just like you can. The thought of a woman wanting to vote. It's amazing, isn't it? The thought that a woman wants to be a CEO of some great big firm. It is amazing. Next thing I find out, there's going to be a woman who's going to want to run for president of the United States. In, day, in Rome, in Jesus' day, there was nothing worse than a woman than a dog. Women were, no, were not considered any better than a dog. I'm telling you what, dogs are considered a lot more today almost than some women are. It's interesting. Culture wants to keep women in their place. How would we say it? We need to keep the women in the kitchen. Right? Is that what we say in the world today? The Bible speaks to that issue back in the book of Luke. Where have we been? The book of Luke tells us we need to reverse that mentality. It only goes to show that we have not read the Bible. Women have a significant role in Luke's gospel and Acts. Can I share with you something? Who was the first person to hear the good news about the birth of the Messiah? A woman. Who was the first person to hear about the good news of Christ's resurrection? Women, Luke is the only gospel writer who informs us that the early Jesus movement was financed by women. In chapter, in, in, in one chapter, Martha, in chapter 1 of Luke, guess who are the most important characters in Luke chapter 1? Mary and Elizabeth. Do you know, we know very little about Joseph. We know very little about Zacharias. Luke is showing us that women have a significant role in Christian living. In, in the Gospel, Luke often couples stories or parables about a man and the next one is a woman. For instance, in one chapter he talks about, he talks about Simon and Ananias. In another chapter, he, Jesus first heals a man, and then he heals a woman. In the parable of the Good Samaritan in chapter 10, he follows it by a visit with Mary and Martha. In chapter 13, a man plants a mustard seed, and a woman adds some yeast to the dough. If you notice the stories in Matthew 15 and in Luke 15, the shepherd loses his sheep, and a woman loses her corn. Isn't that amazing? 
the significance that Luke places not only on the man but on the woman. So we're going to see that throughout the book. There needs to be a reversal role that a woman and a man in God's eyes are equal. Let me give you a third point. In the gospel, there was a lot of eating going on. They loved to eat in those days. Jesus attends banquets. Jesus is seen at meals. Jesus eats after his resurrection. Jesus is eating at meals because it was a way of expressing social and religious orders. Jesus ate and drank with not only the worthy, but he also drank with the unworthy. Isn't it amazing? Jesus went to a banquet that was he was invited by the leaders of the Pharisees. He looked around and he says, you know, Jesus looked around and he says, where are the other guys? Jesus criticized those who invited him because they didn't invite who they considered was unworthy. Jesus ate with the sinners and the publicans as well as the Pharisees. Today we eat on the run. We, we, get our, we get our dinner. We get our dinner at the kitchen table and run to the TV room. We eat, and then we run out the door as soon as we can to a ball game. And frequently sitting down together as a family, I want you to know that Jesus and Luke participated in a meal that had some substance. There was a formal meeting held for the discussion on a subject. If a subject was going to be dealt with, they had a meal. And they reclined on a couch. And they were long and had festivities for several days. They ate, they drank, they had lengthy conversation. There was no galloping and there was no gulping at the meal. They just gulped the food down and galloped out the door. I mean, we're not racehorses. And the meal at dinner table was one of the places where we most clearly manifest our values as well as our social gathering. Now our social gathering is on Facebook. 